buddy Phil801 here. I'm out in the mountains today. I've been snowshoeing around. Wanted to talk a little bit about building snow caves. And uh, we'll put this into our wilderness shelter series. But wanted to talk about different methods of building snow shelters. And primarily today I want to talk about snow caves. One reason is out there, a ways in the parking lot, um, they've plowed it and there's huge piles of snow. And the Boy Scouts have come out here, and I know this because I was out here recently and saw them there. But the Boy Scouts have come out and they've built a bunch of snow caves. And they've built most of them incorrectly. In fact, I've looked at several. I haven't seen one that's built correctly yet. Those boys had to be freezing. They've built them straight in. Some of them even angled down a little bit. They, they are way bigger than they need to be. And, um, you know, clearly they didn't understand the basic principles of building a good snow cave. So I thought we would talk about those principles and then we'll go and take a look at uh, what these guys built. And I thought it was a great opportunity to be able to show the wrong way to do a bunch of stuff. So we'll go check that out in a little bit. But first of all, let's talk about snow caves and how to build them. The proper way to build a snow cave <laughs> is to build it as small as you need it because you want to be able to warm up the air in there and the bigger you have it the more cold air is going to be in there and the more, the more it's going to take to keep it warm with body heat and with a candle or whatever you're using. So first of all you want to make it small. Second of all you want to make sure that you go up at about a 30 degree angle at your entrance and the reason for that is because of the principle of air. Hot air rises and cold air lowers. Well, if you provide an exit for the cold air, then it will get pushed out. And the hot air will eventually fill your upper chamber and it will become warm in there. With that, if you're burning a candle in there, you also need to make sure that you have ventilation. So you want to take your avalanche probe or um, the, sh the handle of your snow shovel or whatever you're using, whatever you've got available, you want to punch a hole through the ceiling. That way you can get good air circulation without losing all your hot air. One of the other things you want to make sure you do is you, you want to come up and you want to build yourself a sleeping platform. So you want to have it a little bit separate so that you've got an isolated sleeping platform. And you also want to make sure that you smooth out the ceiling and the sides. Everywhere that it's divoted or there's a ridge, it's going to, as the, as the snow melts on top, it's going to drip down, it's going to hit that ridge, and it's going to stop its continuous flow out, and it's going to come out, and that'll end up dripping. So if you, above you, if you have a kind of divoted ceiling, then you'll end up with water dripping down on you, and you want to avoid that. On your sleeping area, you want to make sure that you put down some kind of insulation. Um, preferably a sleeping pad or two. You want to insulate your body from the, the frozen ground and then you want to make sure that you have a warm sleeping bag. The other thing you can do is use a backpack or um, gear. You could pile snow but then you have to dig it out but if you put a backpack to block the entrance then you have less cold air trying to force its way in and you can make a snow cave really snug by building it correctly and you can be very warm and very comfortable in a snow cave. And I can't tonight, but one of these nights I'm going to come out and film myself staying the night in a snow cave. And, and uh, unfortunately, with commitments, this is Thursday night, Thursday afternoon, um, I can't stay the night out here tonight. <coughs> but it's, uh, it's roughly, I think it's about 10 degrees out here right now. It's pretty cold. Um, I've been hiking around so I just have some light layers on. But that's pretty much it as far as snow caves go. We'll go down and take a look at one and if I have time I'll probably build one. Um, hopefully I'll have time to do that. I was also going to uh, do some more hiking and do some more filming. So we'll see if I can get everything done today. Um, it's been a fun day out here. It's been a short day. Unfortunately I didn't have a lot of time to spend out here. so. Love being out here in the wilderness, get away from the house, get away from the office. And uh, I was getting kind of tired of filming videos on the inside. I want to get out and film. 
Anyway, let's go take a look. Right up here is the first one we're going to take a look at. And you can see this one's really shallow. Oh, I doubt, well, it looks like somebody slept in there. It's all smoothed out on the bottom and melted a little bit like it had a warm body laying there. If somebody slept in this, they were dang cold. Let's go on to the next one. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like an animal marked it. And it's collapsed up here. But they built this one wrong. They've gone down. And it looks like it's pretty big under there. I'm not going to slide down there. I don't think I'll fit. That collapsed hole is too small. Okay. So here's our next one. This one has a ridiculously small entrance, but it doesn't look like it's from a collapse. It looks like they built it that way. Let's see. I couldn't even fit in here if I wanted to. So, let's back out. There we go. So this one they've hollowed out, but they go down into it, which means their hot air would have been running out instead of staying in. Look at that dangling crystal. Isn't that pretty? There's another one. Just hanging off the snow. Looks like there's a hair stuck in the snow. And this is actually built up on the hair. It's really pretty. Okay, so here's our next one. This one has a huge entrance for some reason. It's not tall, it's just really wide. Which is a mistake. Because you're going to be drafting way too much air this way. And you can't even tell, but it's really shallow. You're seeing the back of it. The front there on top and then the back. It looks like somebody tried to lay this way in here. They were freezing. Here's another one. This one's kind of interesting. It's like they tried to build a almost igloo style entrance. There's another one of those crystals. That one's huge. So, this cave This is a decent size. Looks like they built some shelves for themselves over there. But it goes straight in and actually it drops in a little bit. So again, they would have been keeping a lot of their cold air in here. All right, so here's another one. Got a bunch of people that just came into the parking lot. This one is reasonably sized. Looks like some ashes or soot back there. They built a couple shelves right there. One of the things I've been noticing in all these is that they didn't smooth the roofs out. We're looking at the roof right now. You can see how jagged it is. And it was it would have been dripping on them. Had they got it warm enough in here to start melting, which I'm not sure that they could have, given the size of it and everything. Unless they had a couple people in here, then maybe. This 
This one is interesting. They go in and then they turn right. And there's somebody driving in the parking lot right now. So this one actually goes back quite a ways. It's ridiculously huge. Hopefully they built it for a few people. All right, so I ran into a couple of buddies here and we decided to show you how big this cave is. It's ridiculously huge unless you got like four guys in it. But you can see they can fit just fine in it. They're sitting up. There's a vent hole up here. Back there, they've got a couple of little cubby holes built. They got some blood stains over here. We're not really sure what went on in here. We got some more of these awesome crystals hanging around in here. We're thinking that they might come from a dog, but you can kind of get the size of this. Goes all the way on, and I'm just sitting here. Then there's the entrance. So this one's massive. And I'm betting that it wasn't very warm unless they had a bunch of guys in here. <laughs> This one's interesting. They almost, they do. They almost have this right. This goes up a bit, but not up far enough to effectively trap the warm air. It's fairly large, but this one is the closest I've seen to being correct. It's, it's not too tall, and it angles up slightly, but not enough. But it's too big, too. You can see over there is their vent hole. Okay, I think this is our last one. Let's hope they got it right. And they didn't. He comes straight in. It's higher than it needs to be. And it's a lot deeper than it needs to be. Unless you had three people in here. This is a three-man snow cave. You can almost squat right over there. It's pretty tall. I don't know if I can show the sense of how high it is. But it's a lot taller than it should be. So. That's pretty much it.